Hi and welcome to this edition of Mobile Tech Videos brought to you uh, by Connection 2005 from XDA Developers. Uh, today we'll be going through how to establish VPN access uh, for Cisco uh, IPsec VPN appliances uh, using your Samsung Captivate phone. So what we have here is our Samsung Captivate. Uh, this is a completely stock, completely flashback to uh, original ROM with master clear phone. If we go to my files, we can see there's nothing on the phone, nothing at all. So we're going to start with this device. Uh, the first thing we're going to go to is putting the phone in a USB debugging mode. So press the settings button at the bottom left, settings option, applications, development. Make sure the checkbox is checked for USB debugging, then say OK when it prompts you. You can go back to the home screen on the phone at this time. Uh, one thing we will have to do during this is root the phone. We're working with Android 2.1 right now. Um, for 2.2 routing, uh, you'll need to go out there and, and choose your preferred method to root with. Uh, most people that are on 2.2 are already rooted due to the fact that uh, there are way more rooted ROMs out there than the stock uh, the stock ROM. So, um, anyways, we're going to be using the root files given to us from uh, the Galaxy One Click root. So uh, you can click the link to download this VPN batch folder that I've created. Uh, I've extracted the root.zip file and the rootme.bat file. Be sure that in the internal SD card, if you do have anything called update.zip, that you delete that file at this time because otherwise we're not going to be able to successfully push uh, the new update.zip file. So I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and catch up with everything we've just talked about to download the VPN uh, batch folder. Uh, that I've created and to uh, to browse and make sure that you have no update.zip uh, file currently on your internal storage and what I mean by that is if you were to unlock your phone and go into your files on the, the, the root of the SD card you'd make sure there's no update.zip there so go ahead and do that and we'll catch up with you on the next step Okay, once you've gone ahead and, and established uh, every all the prerequisites from the first step, we can go ahead and plug in our phone via USB. Of course, this tutorial, like many of mine, uh, is already assuming that you have the correct drivers. Uh, those can be found at xdadevelopers.com, uh, uh, as well as in a bunch of other places online. Uh, once you plug it in, those will install. We've uh, set up the phone with this machine numerous times, so it's already aware of what device is plugged in. So what we need to do now is uh, establish that we have connectivity. So go ahead and click Start and open a command prompt. Once you do that, you can navigate to where you've put your VPN folder. We put on ours on our desktop. So we just did a change directory to my, uh, to desktop, and then we did to VPN batch. So we'll back back out of that. Now what I've included in the VPN batch folder is of course the ADB tool uh, in order to do a lot of the commands we're going to do. Uh, multiple TuneCo files for Android 2.1 and 2.2, as well as a few DLL files to, to allow ADB to run successfully. And I've also created a handy batch script to install multiple applications, push the TuneCo file, and uh, do a couple other things uh, to really simplify this process. So once we've uh, gotten into our VPN batch directory, type in ADB devices and press enter. Uh, if your phone is connected and recognized correctly, we will see that uh, it is listed here. So once we've proved that we've got connectivity, we can proceed to the next step. That next step will be rooting the phone. So you can go ahead and close this. And we're going to run the rootme.batch file seen here. So go ahead and highlight it, press enter. That's going to run and push the file to your phone. After that, it's going to reboot into recovery. So press any key to close that script. And we will take a look at the phone. It's rebooting. Now what we're going to do here is using the volume down key, press it once. It will highlight reinstall packages, press the power button to select. It'll do that and reboot the phone. Once the phone's rebooted, you have officially rooted 2.1 Android. Uh, and once it gets booted back up, we'll go ahead and take a look at the next step. 
Okay, once you've reinstalled packages and rooted the phone and it's booted back up, you can turn it back on and just uh, make sure your cable's still plugged in and you're in USB debugging mode, which you, you still will be. Uh, at this time, we want to run the batch script that I've created. Uh, this batch script is going to install four applications. Those applications will be BusyBox, OpenVPN Installer, OpenVPN Settings, and VPN Connections. They're all APK files. They're all going to install using standard ADB commands. Uh, I've made two separate scripts, one for Android 2.1 and then one for Android 2.2. Um, these scripts are going to use uh, either one of the files Android 2.1 TuneCo or Android 2.2 TuneCo. So we're going to go ahead and launch this script for 2.1 since that's the phone we're working with. Um, now what we're going to do here is when we launch the script, we'll notice that it's going to restart the, the daemon for uh, the ADB service and it's going to push this file. You will see push completed upon completion. So. Let's see if I can focus in on that there. Okay, we've got a decent focus there. Uh, once we do that, we're going to press the key for the next option, which will begin install the VPN applications. Press it once. It's going to copy over VPN connections.apk. Press it again. We're going to install uh, busybox.apk. And this is really just going to simplify you having to go to the market and get all the applications. It's going to push them all to the phone for you and install them. Uh, press it again. It will install OpenVPN Installer. And press it once more to install OpenVPN Settings. When that's complete, we can press any button to close this script. So press any button and it will close the script. Once you've got those installed, uh, we'll go to the next step. Okay, once you've completed the Mobile Tech Videos uh, VPN script for your application, go ahead and go into the applications of your phone. You'll notice all the applications are installed. We've got BusyBox here. We've got the two open VPNs down there at the bottom left. And then we've got VPN connections on the second row to the left. So we're going to open up BusyBox Installer right now and install BusyBox. This is going to allow us to run certain commands that aren't native to the Android operating system. So say OK to the initial message. Click Allow for super user access. Uh, the status is going to stay waiting and once that has verified if there's any BusyBox installed it's going to prompt you with either BusyBox was not found or it's going to prompt you with a location if it has been installed. Uh, many 2.2 ROMs uh, already contain BusyBox so there won't be a need to do that if it's already on the phone but this is a great way to take a look. If it's not as in this phone uh, go ahead and click install. It's going to install it or attempt to at least uh, upon successful install, you will see the status done and that it has installed the application. After this, we're going to press the home key and go back to the home screen. And I'll let you get caught up with that and we'll go to the next step. Okay, after we've configured our BusyBox installation and installed the software for it, uh, we're going to go ahead and run some code. Uh, so go ahead and open up another command line just as we did in the beginning. I'll drag mine to the left and open up the uh, the code.txt file for your particular application. So we're going to uh, open tunco underscore 21 underscore code since we're working with Android 2.1. And what we want to do here is on this side, we want to go ahead and navigate to uh, where we've got our ADB, which is change directory uh, desktop for us backslash VPN batch. So we've changed that directory. We're going to run an ADB devices to ensure that we're still connected, which we still are. Uh, at this time, we're going to enter the ADB shell. And this is where we want to, it's going to be tough to see the white one. You have it in front of you, of course. But we're going to start running these commands. So I'm going to focus back onto the black so we can see everything. The first command we're going to run, sorry about the camera there. The first command we're going to run is ADB shell. This is going to connect us to the phone, and we're now running all commands from the phone. Now you need to unlock your phone. Be sure that it's unlocked and you can see everything. If this is locked, still you won't see the next command. The next command is SU for super user. You're going to press enter. On the phone, you're going to be prompted, allow super user. Once you've allowed it, you can set it aside, and you'll notice a pound sign will come up. This means that we're in super user uh, control at this time. So let me go ahead and center this camera up a little better. 
And once we've done that, we can begin to mount the file system for full read write access. That command is in the text file. So let's mount dash o space remount comma rw forward slash dev forward slash block forward slash stl6 space forward slash system. Press enter. When you do, if it successfully completes, you'll get a return of a pound sign. Now we've got read write access, and we need to copy the file from our internal SD card to the system xbin location on the phone. To do that, we type the next line. We'll do cp for copy from location, which is SD card forward slash Android 21 tune.ko space. And this is where we're going to identify where it's going to system forward slash xbin forward slash. We're going to go ahead and press enter and we will receive another pound sign on the return. So once we've got to this point, we have now mounted our file system, we've copied the file to the root system directory where it needs to be. Now we're going to create symlinks for BusyBox route, uh, BusyBox route and ifconfig. These are required by the OpenVPN application. So now in the command line we're going to type the next line which is cd for change directory to system xbin. Once we get there, we're going to make a directory called bb. That's, you know, make directory command bb. Once we've done that, we're going to change to the bb directory using the cd space bb command. That now moves us to the busybox directory we just created. Here's where we're going to make our sim links. So type in the next two lines, ln space dash s space period period forward slash busybox space period forward slash ifconfig. After you've typed this line, go ahead and press enter. Now, you can simply press up if you're using a uh, Windows XP computer and it will present you with the last line we typed. Simply uh, erase ifconfig and type route. Or you can retype the line if you'd like, but this is just a sa time saver from having to type all that again. Press enter. We'll receive a pound sign after every completed entry. Once we have done this, we're going to make a directory for our Open v OpenVPN configuration files. Uh, if you do want to use OpenVPN to do this, uh, this is where your config files will be stored. We're going to be showing you how to do this using the VPN connections, but we're going to go ahead and create this directory for those of you who would like to use OpenVPN um, as the application of choice. So we're going to go ahead and make that directory, typing mkdir space forward slash sd card forward slash OpenVPN. Okay, now we've created that directory. We're going to create one more symlink uh, using copy, otherwise the install script of the OpenVP installer will fail if we don't do this. So type in ln space dash s space forward slash system forward slash xbin forward slash busybox space forward slash system forward slash xbin forward slash copy. This is creating a sim link from this location to this location. I know this is a lot to take in at first, but I want to be precise and I want everyone to know exactly what's going on here, so that's, that's why this is so in-depth. Press enter, we'll get a pound sign. After we've done all this, we can go to the next step. So I'm going to allow you to catch up at this time, review anything that I've talked about, and we'll meet, meet up with you on the next step. Okay, now that we've run our commands, we're going to discuss the importance of the INS mod command. INS mod is used to uh, register uh, modules. Uh, we need to register the tune.ko file that we've loaded. That's the file that VPN applications use for connectivity. Um, one of the problems with Android 2.1 or 2.2 right now is it won't load this at boot. So we need to make sure that we run an INS mod tuneco uh, for any time the device is rebooted or in this instance for the first time it's going to run. To check what modules are running first, we're going to type in ls mod. We'll notice that we've got our modules here, but TuneCo is not running. Let me pull this up a little higher. TuneCo is not running at this time. What we need to do is switch to the directory that we placed TuneCo. To do this, we'll do a change directory, forward slash system, forward slash xbin. Now we're in the directory we've replaced the TuneCo file. We can perform an ins mod space uh, Android 21tune.ko. This is going to register the module that we've placed in this directory. Press enter. Once you do that, we can type in LSMod again, and now we notice that tune.